Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are here for episode 37. Since we've now reached fall, the air conditioner is starting to, you know, fall out of relevance. So, recording should pick back up a little bit now that that's in place. Uh, episode 37. If you're confused about why there, why these, why these specific cars are here, oh, I mean they always are relevant to the video somehow. So, that's, I guess, to start unpacking that as we head into the first race of the episode without further delays, because I don't have anything else to put here. The first race of the episode is underway. It is deep forest time. And, uh, well, ugh. I don't know where that yawn just came from. The, uh... I'm gonna get at least the first slice of... At least the first part of why, uh... Wow, I can't speak. Should I just do this over again? Uh, fuck it, we do it live. Get at least the first part of that pictures. Or that thumbnail image. There we go. I found the words. Explanation for the first part of that. We're on board with my dad and his now, uh... Like, as I mentioned before, a lot of the dirt spec cars, they've been reworked to run in the road going categories after the dirt division has sort of settled out after we've done the main four circuits in the category. Most of them have returned to being racetrack cars, like this the Isle of Man, the David Moore Axis, now a 680 car for my dad. He had to then re-register his RCF as a 720 car, same with... Erica Roth's example of the same vehicle. So now the super touring car, because I'm just going to keep calling it that, is a... that's an official car as well. The moment he finds himself boxed in amongst a bunch of black style motorsports drivers and Maki. And unsurprisingly, there's a little bit of contact between Maki and Natsuki. Dad seizes the moment, overtakes both of those cars, and he's up into the top half and then some now. Sneaks around the outside of Thrasher in the Mustang. I'm going the wrong way on the leaderboard. Where the heck is my dad? There it is. He gets ahead of Tyler, heading for the next braking zone. Probably gonna outdrag me. And Nico, for good measure. And now we're seeing the DRS is actually making a difference now here. see the wing moves up and down as it's activated and deactivated. Here we have Kira Kishibe trying to get second from Garrison. Instead, my dad will once again get the pair of those two drivers. Struggles a bit to outdrag the C2 vet, but eventually does so, and now we're just down to Dedrick Schwartz. This isn't going to be easy, considering this is Dedrick's favorite track in the whole series. He remembers winning one of his first Gran Turismo Association events here a while back. But my dad does not care and just screeches ahead of the TVR. And after this section of corners, will be confirmed as the leader of the race. With still well over a lap to go. He goes beginning to fall down the order. We have Thrasher versus Maki for position as well. That Super Touring Impreza is already a mere speck in the distance for the TBR.
I initially believed that the DRS would be just some sort of, like, game-breaking system that the car has, but in reality, it's just a... It's just a small benefit. It actually doesn't have any better top speed than most of the cars here. Schwartz's car with no DRS is getting better top speed, and no doubt a lot of other cars are as well. Even if it has the downforce to take the last kink completely flat out, it still doesn't have the top speed to compete with really anybody else on the racetrack. Nico continues to plummet. Now Thrasher, Maki, and Vegas have claimed her position, so she's not even inside the top half of the field anymore when I believe she started in fourth. Fourth or fifth. You can see on this back straight, my dad will reach 163 before having to slam on the brakes. Schwartz at 171, 175. Uh, me and Kira are a little weak. I think Tyler's at 167. Thrasher is now there. Tyler's gonna use me up a little bit to try and get around, but I have all-wheel drive, so eat it. And... Steven Lummel is going to get the victory at Deep Forest. So... Two appearances, two wins for the Impreza WRX fake super touring car. Schwartz stays second to Garrison, goes for a pass in the cooldown lap, but only gets a third officially. So yeah, basically the big stories here, well, Dico's A70 Supra is not living up to the hype, but the Subaru Super Touring Car from my dad certainly seems to be. You're agreeing for the second race of this episode. It is 600 class cars at the Barcelona National layout. We basically cut sector one out of the circuit and call it a brand new track. For the first time since like probably in the single digit episodes, we are on board with Isabella Flynn in her ND Miata. Her Roadster or whatever, UNOS MX-5 Miata Roadster thing. So traffic jams, Sayori just about barges really white out of the way and does make the pass via that. I mean, well, the starting grid seems to have blessed my dad as it put him, I believe, on the front row. Well, front row. Second. He said it's second, but he was easily able to outdrag the A110 well before the first corner. <laughs> Ugh. And Dietrich Schwartz is also receiving the same favoritism as he started in P3. Those are already up a few places, but Melissa Weiss isn't quite making her her uh, her journey easy. Now, obviously, why would she do that? <laughs> Scott Weber went nowhere off that corner. Probably because Taylor Lynn created a big checkup and Isabella has taken a complete advantage. Gets a little bit of contact from the Abarth, but is ultimately clear of that gridlock. I've heard Taylor tossing around the idea of just abandoning the 600 category, as this Abarth has not provided the greatest of results. 
There's a certain extent to where Taylor is not exactly a competitive person, unless you're playing Apex Legends or Fortnite, much less a race. But even as an, even as a less competitive spirit, they still are kind of looking at their results sideways. Like, wow, what is going on here? Fields Ratter, Ratter? Ah, uh, yeah, Red just spread out to my ID. I'm Irish now. I'm mean, eating up potato chips. I guess it counts for something. Mmm, mmm, okay, Isabella, uh, not quite traction there. Gives Narashi a little tag. I was saw that kind of funny. Character development is being able to replace the default manufacturer logo with the logo of a team on the door. I was able to send it back down the inside of Flynn who got very lackadaisical on the brakes, but straight exit off the last turn. Out of the last turn, out of that hairpin allows her to take the position away regardless. Gets to the inside of Hornet and sneaks her way through there. Good exit here would allow her to get Schwartz down the main drag, and I think she's gotten exactly that. The golf is not better, not here. But one lap to try and get around two more cars. About two and a half seconds away from the lead. Schwartz wants to get aggressive into the first turn, but is simply nowhere nearby Flynn to even attempt. I'm gonna try the outside of the Al Alpine A110. And gets it. And now one sector, one Firebird, one winner between my dad and Isabella. Dad trying to get his second consecutive victory. <laughs> Isabella trying to probably get her first victory in the entire series! Hold it steady. You can't win, you can't win a race if you got no car to finish with. She's obviously pushing that thing to try and get to the Firebird driver. She's about there too, for good measure. She's at the inside, but that's now the outside. Last turn, more oversteer from the Miata, and I think the horsepower will allow my dad to grab a second consecutive win, this time in the 600 class Firebird rather than the 680 Super Touring Car Impreza. Then it will send, despite having the least horsepower in the field, manages to cling to third, with, well, other than Isabella's intrusion, little to no issues. So, close finish, and we have not had many cases of the same driver winning two races in a row. The last one I can think to do that might have been Rain, and that was several, several episodes ago. That was probably in, like, the teens range of episodes, like, 13, I want to say? I want to say it was, like, somewhere in the mid-tens region. It's been at least 20 episodes, I think. Since we've had a driver win back to back. I wanted to raise three. I saw my dad on the starting grid. I wonder perhaps he will repeat a third time. Who knows? And we are green for the third round of this episode. Group four is at Inner Lagos, or Sao Paulo, or whatever you want to call it. It's got like six different names, I swear. And this time the camera's focused on Katori in her 4C. And she is being absolutely used up right now. If there was a mixture of Summers pushing Fidel into her. Probably would have been an illegal overtake in most motorsports, but honestly we just kind of have the gentleman's agreement and that's worked a heck of a lot better than trying to inconsistently police track limits. 
Don't ask me how I know, that it probably works better. We haven't exactly had anybody try and cut the circuit extremely, now have we? He's making supremely fast progress. Especially if we're driving the Alpha 4C, a car which really lacks a whole lot of horsepower, even with BOP applied as it is in the Group 4 class. It's supposed to theoretically make every car even, but some are more even than others, to say the least. I believe the GTR and... Uh, let me see the other one. It was like the GTR and the Sylvia and the... The Viper, actually, are just slightly a cut above the rest. You could still win the Challenge Series race in any Group 4, but it would certainly be easier in some than others. But Kratori is making the F4C look pretty easy at the moment, so she's already up to 6th place after just one lap. And once again, my dad started near the front, but Thrasher is just kind of on his own up here. He's I believe my dad started third behind Thrasher and Samuel. You can fact check that by going back to the start of the race. I'm not going to because that would sort of break the flow of the recording. Um, he was somewhere around there, but Thrasher is just gone. Probably a two second lead at least over my dad, if not more. And Samuel is also just kind of desperately trying to stay with them. Kotori is already to fifth now, ahead of Shoji in his NSX. The momentum from that Sakuba win obviously didn't carry him too far. Kotori on the back of the Subaru of Johnny Parker now. At the very least, should have the corner advantage on him, just due to being such a tiny little car. And you can still kind of wash us out into him a tiny bit. But then again, Parker didn't exactly leave the most real estate for her either, so... All's fair in love and apexes. Uh, my dad is picking it up though, he did just set a faster lap than Thrasher, and then there's Kotori being a whole second quicker than everyone else. Mm. The weird gas there. Further down the order, here's Nozomi on Shoji for 6th place. Shoji breaks super late, though. So he's able to hang on to that. A battle between the 8-6s for basically being ahead of last. Hernandez is looking like a fraud. Kotori is catching to the back of Jansen's Viper. Huge almighty send, and that's not exactly the prettiest overtake I've ever seen. May not even be made yet, either. They're gonna still be too wide heading towards the next hairpin. Kotori just about keeps a splitter there, if nothing else. This time down the inside in a much more sophisticated manner. And that's to the podium positions for the Alfa Romeo. Now only two more challengers to go. My dad and Thrasher. So Kotori might have a no, not even close. I was gonna say she might have a run on my dad into one, but no. That's not striking distance, that's a second back. Uh, gonna put a grass in your shoes to try and make in roads. All the while they've both caught back up to Thrasher who seems to maybe take his foot off the gas a little bit. 
Not literally, but you know what I mean. So we're gonna have pretty much a three-way bout to decide the winner at Sao Paulo. I almost said Brazil. I mean, technically yes, but also no. Samuel just watches in the distance. Victoria's gonna send it back up the inside of the Lexus, get into the tail of the Mustang in the lead, though. I don't know these two teams have not... They've not been the friendliest for the last few episodes now, ever since Ellie and Thomas had that run in a while ago. That camera really doesn't help me see a whole lot, game. It looks cinematic, but ultimately, as far as actually seeing what the cars are doing, that's not worth shit. Oh boy, oh boy, oh! Spinala, Kotori gets loose in the braking zone, puts Thrasher in the grass, and that might mean... Yes, my dad, ever the opportunist, apparently, he sneaks into the lead. And that is history, courtesy of Kotori's incompetence. My dad's gonna go three in a row, now at Interlagos, with a group four. Following that bombshell. Let's go back and actually see what really happened here. That's not far enough back. Gets into his side there. Gets the better run through this downhill left. And Thrasher does, like, move over a tiny bit, and Kotori just overreacts and panics, I guess? Kind of slides Thrasher into the grass, and... My dad takes complete advantage of that situation. What did he see there? You see Kotori catch that curb. Let's take a shallow exit, but it's all worth it because he sneaked on through. Even Samuel Jansen was almost close enough to capitalize on those goings on. And ultimately, he gets nothing. Kotori is barely left to just sit on the podium and Wonder where it all went wrong, even though I can tell you exactly where. We're green for round four of this episode, and, uh, well, I mean, I know that some bullshit happens here. If I didn't know from literally being in the race on pole right now, I would have known from the fact that Nittery, when writing the commentator's notes for it, circled this race on the track lists in like three different colors of marker. Blue, red, and black. Oh my god! Well that's a good start. What the fuck happened to Parada there? Did they get run into or did they just fuck it? They botched the downshift, it looks like, and they're just... The car just caught. And I'm surprised the thing is rolling as well as it is, considering it's face tank to the barrier at like 100-something miles an hour. And the camera car is one Nozomi Tojo and her boss, Mustang. Which really looks like if you just try to draw Axel Valentine's Mach 1 from memory. It gets walled a little bit by Thomas O'Reilly there. Sends it on both Thomas and Ring. Almost got Thrasher in the package deal, but didn't quite go far enough. The fuck? I went too far back, hang on. It's like Thrasher moves over a little bit to cover her off and gets into her. And she's not happy, but she almost spins herself out in her fit of dislike. Fit of dislike. Fit of disapproval.
anything, so he finally clears the F-150. And, alright! Gets into both Nozomi and Tyler, for good measure. I can't tell if this was just a hefty misjudgment, or if Rasher really is just pissed. That sounded ugly. Uh... It just absolutely bodies the fuck out of Nozomi. Puts her into Tyler, spins her into the outside wall, and sends her back to laugh. Even Tenchi, who spun at the start of this lap, is now back ahead of this Mustang. And I can only imagine that this... this little... this is... this probably means war, I fear. Meanwhile, at the front, my dad is trying to continue making history, and grabs the lead from me. I don't know when that happened exactly, but it happened. Nozomi is <clears throat> back in the field, and Thrasher just brake tested Rain. And some attempts to probably evade Nozomi, and there through goes the bug of Jake. The top speed of this truck is uh, not ideal. It's like several hundred horsepower, but it really doesn't seem to matter. Green even gets into Jake a tiny bit. Tenshi's just having a meltdown, trying to find the... Why do I keep saying it's not Tenshi? It's Tetsuya! Oh my god! Brain, please remember how to commentate things. Holy shit. Now Suwako's the leader. Well, what happened through turn one? What, what, what kind of, like, shuffle time was this? So my dad's the leader, but that GTO does not have the greatest high RPM power. The Subaru is slightly better, and Honoka is considerably better. That didn't sound right. So I don't think my dad's going to be making four in a row, because he does not have the necessary top speed to stay in the lead. He'll instead fall behind Honoka and Suwako, and potentially Nitori, who just has her ECU map better or something. Because its power band is much more consistent than that of the GTO. And Thomas is trying to make his way through. <clears throat> He's getting a lot of traffic from... Shoji, Minako, Kugasa, Distantly, Nico. There's only wants to try and sneak around Tyler, but is obstructed by the Super B. Ironically enough, it seems the strength of the Raptor is actually in the turns, which just seems so ass-backwards, it's unbelievable. Basher gets into her again! What, the first time wasn't enough? Now there's a beep, much deserved. More beeping. I think we might need a safety car for that. Not a red flag, but a yellow flag. Um, looks as though I think I see a bit of damage on both cars. You can kind of see the scrapes and shit. Also, maybe just to get them off the track before somebody actually gets hurt. Because you know I actually care about my driver base, so we're just going to call yellow on that. And we'll be back shortly. No flag has subsided, and I refuse to put the camera on these two children back here. Who we'll restart in the back since they had effects of their cars, and they'd have been back there anyway. Uh, we return instead to uh, three laps to go here at Tokyo. You've, see, you've seen a little bit of time has passed. It is now sunset rather than late afternoon. And we're on board now with Thomas O'Reilly, who was 
the only other driver here that brought a dash cam. My brake had a problem there. And well, we'll just say, literally circled this race, and I think I would have probably done so too. Thomas sneaks ahead of Kratori and then covers the lane. Kratori wanted so much to get to the inside of O'Reilly, but could not find room. She's just all over his rear bumper. And he's all over my rear bumper. Katori doesn't like that and shoves in the side. <laughs> no. Door, it's a little weird horn from the the 51. It's probably a big old nudge. And actually, nudges her basically into the back of me. Gets a not great exit, and Minako takes full advantage of that. Horsepower is going to get him back clear of the RX-8 quickly anyway. Yeah? My, I'm over here. Dumbass. an actual battle instead of just Mortal Kombat for basically a second here. Honoka! That was the being more than familiar with the expressway has just shown herself out. She is just in the next dimension now. Thomas has encountered traffic. Lots of it. Maki, Suako, and my dad all present and accounted for here as we head through the middle section of the course. Gets two in one corner, but a big step out. He manages to keep it out of a huge collision, but strikes himself out from Suwako being there, and now my dad, for good measure. Yeah, so from what Thrasher has told me, uh, Thomas seems to have some sort of delusional concept in his head that. The reason that Mercury Racing has become aggressive with his team is because of me. Like I'm the one telling my driver, like telling the Mercury girl to sabotage Black Stallion Motorsports. When a, why would I do that? My friend runs Black Stallion Motorsports. Why would I try to sabotage my friend's team? B, I don't even run Mercury. And Kotori is tired of it too. He's running them right out of the way. Dad is hopelessly out of control in front of me. Nozomi is returned to the middle of the field. And Thomas... E. Thomas just thinks if he cuts, me, cuts it off at the sword, that it's just gonna go away. Fuckface, you're making it worse! Okay. And then because Honoka's up here starting the final lap, we can't throw a safety car for that. So that's a DNF for me. Thanks, Thomas, you stupid fuck. I'll just scramble to even get my Integra out of the way. Gives Kotori more bullshit. And more.
the good one. Good one. Yeah, I think you hurt yourself more than her, dumb fuck. Hope that she gives you a nice long talking to. Cause by fucking god you need one. <laughs> Beep at her, okay. I'm not in much of a commentary mood right now. Be the first to admit. We still have the roulette round after this. Well, I mean, do what you will, dumb dumbass. For Mercury has already won, as it'll be a one-two finish for Honoka and Maki. Maki, who got here from like bottom ten on the grid. That's gonna be Honoka getting the nod. Now she will grab the victory at Tokyo Expressway. Somewhere Veronica is super excited and doesn't understand why. Later he will finish off the podium, followed by that guy, Suako, Kotori, Nozomi. So, just generally surrounded by Mercury Racing, but... You know why you think he has, why he even thinks that's a good idea? My dad is here, Thrasher is here, Tyler is here, and like five of my teammates are here. Do you really not think you're gonna have like an angry crowd at your door tonight, Thomas? <laughs> I'm not the source. If anybody's the source, I guess it's Ellie? But like that's still like... Just take us to the roulette race. We are green from the roulette race. And it's a branch hatch this time. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a front loaded grid, which is to say there's a lot of really fast cars, not a lot of slow cars. There's no six hundred class cars here to my to my recollection. Uh the slowest we get is six forties and group fours. And we are on board with Nico. He's driving a seven sixty Viper one of like three or four 760s. Here, there's a lot of 720s as Lucas McCain and that Volkswagen just uses Maki all the way up, depending from the position that he has no hope of staying in. Nico's already slid her way through. Careful navigation, that's the wrong camera. Already into the top half of the field. Obviously the performance of the vehicle, some no small contribution. Gets one there. A little bit of a nudge from Bradley, but stays ahead of him anyway. Gets Taniguchi. Understeers a little bit. Trying to give trying to make sure that Michiko had space to drive. I'm honestly surprised that when I went to pass him, Thomas didn't try and dump me again. I think the only reason he didn't is because he was suffering from oversteer. He didn't really have the remaining grip to try and swing it across and hit me. And there you see my dad's 720 car going for a category win to cap off... That's uh, uh, it's, it's already a record-breaking episode for him, as he's already won three races. Uh, a subpar result at Tokyo Expressway cannot take anything away from that. In order to get that class victory, he's going to have to pass three more cars. He's going to have to beat Natsuki, Ellie, 
And Thomas. No, four. He's gonna also... Five. My god. Yeah, he's got a lot of work to do. <clears throat> he still has to pass Riley, Sebastian, Thomas, and Elliot. And that's key. Nico and I are 760s, so that doesn't count. Oh, well, he gets a little understeer, gets into the side of her teammate, but ultimately, I think Nico's aware of that. I wonder if she's also aware of the fact that I told her not to retaliate against Black Stallion, not make us look any worse. She seems to be paying attention, but I don't really know. Nope! Ellie passes through. Yeah. Reminder, Ellie and Thomas are the two people who started this, and Ellie has no interest in hitting Thomas. Gee, it's almost like they, like, apologize to each other, kind of. Thomas has played himself. <sighs> Nico, you blithering idiots! Fuck did I tell you? <clears throat> Stupid bitch. The hell fighting period is concluded and... Hmm, she had the nerve to try and go back on the race track. No! No, Nico, you're parked for the day. Try again, sweetheart. Maybe teammates Nico. Managing the re series comes first and... God knows I don't want you on the track trying to kill Riley or Natsuki or anything. So... You can just sit your stupid little ass in the garage and watch the rest of the race. Put her in the timeout chair. We now focus on Lynette Mulsanne and her group four Veyron. As she was the one she was the driver who was running last, ignoring Thomas and Nico, since Nico got parked and Thomas got destroyed. Although from what I understand, he will be able to fix the Cobra with a little bit of time off out of the vehicle. He's a bit of a handyman, plus he also has help from a couple of the people who know their way around a Ford. Uh, Axel Valentine, Siegfried Brain, who just knows his way around cars in general, Thrasher, bit by bit, Garrison, he's he's in good hands, he's got Allstate, apparently, I don't know. Uh, So yeah, Mosan was running last, ignoring those two. And we continue on as nothing happened. We restart the race with five minutes to go, so we're already through a little over one third of the race distance now. I think we'll just get four laps in. Ooh. Riel with uh, some interesting braking line. I think that's almost called move that under braking. Almost call move that under call that move under braking. I know I do know English good. Garrison versus Taniguchi into this corner has a name, I'll be fucked if I know what it is. Lasen's trying to insert herself into the picture. Obviously she's got the stability to try and force them like that, but she doesn't have the horsepower to, and Garrison's going to make off with that position from the Toyota Crown. Through your downforce, despite a little bit of resistance from Taniguchi, she will take the place and take advantage of Garrison losing control on exit to make her way to 11th. The 720 class car of Ivan Sotokov is back here, and he's definitely driving a poor man's 720 class, that's for sure. Squeezes it three wide, Ivan runs met into Vincent Houston. Houston is forced off the track and he does well to keep that GT350 straight. And Mosen is not pleased about Ivan's uh, racecraft there. I mean, I kind of agree. He probably could have backed out there. He's the fastest car of the three. He can wait and 
pick a better space than the second to last turn in the brand tap to try and make up places. So, I will... The heck was Terry Gucci doing there? I guess that's just a wide entrance. Yeah, so I'll grant Smilsan that. Just a little, just a little uh, door to bumper action. Or no, bumper to door action. Oh, this thing has a rear view camera. That's weird. And Maki is off. I believe that's just understeer. There's no one around that could have possibly caused this. Yeah, just didn't apply enough brakes, find some grass, and the round goes the F430. Basic racing mistake there. They both have to slow up for Maki as she rejoins straight into Bradley Hunter. Ugh. This team sometimes. They are a little klutzy. Can only imagine how unclean this pass was. And it sends it down the inside of Maki. Maki loses control. And that puts Mosen 7. But with the distance between her and my dad, with what'll be one lap to go for her and some others. Looks like we're, looks like Taniguchi might get to the line just. So that puts Parker, Kaminaga, and McCain out of the race. But yeah, that's quite a distance for Mosen to catch. So I don't think she's going to be getting to any of the 720 category vehicles, other than the one she already passed. Alright, it's just me pulling ahead of the 720 cars in the race. Ellie trying to keep Riley at bay. Orleans on his own. Not really, actually. Natsuki is right there. My dad's more so on his own than anybody. I mean, he started all five races in this episode, and he managed to get three wins, and he's gonna get, well, maybe just a mere fifth in class here out of a seven-car category, but it is a very busy category. Sotokov continues to force his car in places it should not be. I will grab a victory, and perhaps unsurprising, I am after Nico's, after Nico's removal from the grid. The only 760 class car here. Ellie will grab the 720 win for Mercury. No doubt Mulsen wins the Group 4 category. I believe Bradley Hunter wins the 680 class. And Vincent Houston wins the 640 class, keeping a couple of 680s at bay. Could have kept even more at bay if I had been Sotokov and knew how to make overtakes. <laughs> and he kept three 680 class cars at bay and a group four. And then there's only two 640s, Kaminaga and McCain, of which Kaminaga was victorious. So this episode's been a mess. Uh, yeah, th just this episode has been a mess. The last two races, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm back in the, uh, the Alice in Chains era. Messed said the name. I'm not red acting that anymore. Uh, it's no point. Everyone knew about her. Anyone who did, anyone who wasn't here to watch it, probably got told about it. So here we are. Why act like she never existed? She didn't win enough races to be relevant.